Welcome to The Good Stuff. Okay, so in this installment we're going to talk about aliasing. Now, aliasing for people who like VA synth sounds is sort of uh, this nasty thing that happens and you know, the the main focus for most folks with aliasing is on reducing it, getting rid of it, and so forth. I want to show you today how to have fun with aliasing on the PC3 and, and some, some of the cool things you can do with it. So for on the moment, let's. Uh, I'm going to play this patch that I called Arias. It's kind of like an aria, but uh, alias is spelled the same way, just with an L instead of an R. That's why I picked the name. But anyway, so uh, take a, a, a listen to this. Okay, now the only thing I did there was uh, press three notes on the keyboard and hold down sustain pedal, and I just let that play through. Um, and what you heard was uh, uh, all basically aliasing noise that has been um, somewhat modified to make it a, li a bit more musical. So let's go ahead and start exploring aliasing and, and what you can do with it. First of all, we're going to start with our default program. I'm going to go ahead and pick nothing for the key map. We'll turn off key velocity tracking and for the envelope I'm going to pick a user envelope. Okay, so let's go to the alg page. I'm going to start here with um, algorithm number two. Okay, and the first thing I'm going to throw in here is a saw wave. So on the uh, PC3, uh, if you have the single block saw, it exhibits aliasing. So we'll be able to hear what aliasing is. So here's C4, here's C5, here's C6. And here's C7. So you can hear that sort of low buzzy sound that's uh, there in in the note besides uh, the fundamental tone. And it's, it, it sticks out rather obviously. Let me play a couple of keys here starting at about C5. That's up to C6 and then... So you heard those spurious sorts of sounds that were coming in there. Uh, uh, that is is aliasing. Okay, so let's have fun with it. Uh, first of all, let's pick a... Um, I'm going to pick Wrap as my first uh, DSP. Actually, I'm going to do something else first. We're going to go to the DSP control page, or the DSP mod page here, and I'm going to turn this up to about 56 steps. Now, the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to turn off key tracking. So I'm going to... I want this to produce uh, basically the same note as I play anywhere on the keyboard. Okay, um, oh, I have LP noise in here. I must have stopped on the wrong thing. So let's go ahead and pick, uh, let's see, where is it? We'll pick none for now. Okay, here we go. So no matter what key I play on the keyboard, I'm going to get the exact same uh, note. And you can hear how the sound changes as I pick different notes. Those are essentially, that's, that's what you're hearing is almost all aliasing. There's not really very much fundamental in there at all. And, and so that, these noises can be controlled and changed and modified and, and you can do all sorts of fun things with them and use them, you know, just like you would any other oscillator with synthesis. It's interesting to note, of course, that the aliasing artifacts you hear will not themselves alias because they are just the results of, um, of the math that's done to calculate the sawtooth wave uh, up to a certain point. The um, digital analog converter chip inside the PC3 does not alias at all, really. Uh, it, and DACs haven't aliased for, you know, 20 years now or something like that. So all of this stuff... Uh, that you hear is just the byproduct of the computation done for the single block saw in this particular case. So let's see here, I'm going to pick, I like this one, 
has almost a bell-like sound. Okay, so now what we want to do here is we want to get a little bit more control over this. So to do that, I'm going to pick a wrap block, okay? And let's start at minus 32 dB, and I'm just going to scroll through the values here at the mod wheel and play a note. So we'll play C4 and scroll. Turn this up a little bit. Oh, I kind of like that one. So let's go ahead and we'll pick that one for now. Okay, so let's go ahead and go back to the ALG page. Now, right now, what I have is sort of this, this static note. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set up an LFO. And we'll put that at uh, 0.1. We'll go up to 1 hertz. Uh, I'm going to put the rate control to slider A, just for kicks. And shape, I'm going to pick uh, to be, let's see, I want, I think, a plus sine wave. There we go. All right, and then let's go to the DSP mod page and saw pitch. So first of all, let's assign our LFO here to control the depth of the pitch. And it's going to add, we'll say, 300 cents. Okay, so. Now we're getting some interesting stuff. So I'm moving slider A there, which is controlling the uh, speed of the change here. So you can hear that the aliasing artifacts actually span the entire audio spectrum in, in a lot of ways. And, and, and you can get all sorts of crazy sounds out of this. So just with a simple LFO, this, this, this uh, uh, saw oscillator, the pitch that's pitched up beyond where uh, you hear very much of the fundamental and this wrap block, we've been able to create this sound. And even with the slowest LFO, um, you know, we're going at 0 0.01 hertz, which is extremely slow because I have slider A all the way down. You still get these sorts of uh, crazy jumps in the sound. Okay, so uh, let's go ahead and add in a bit more DSP here. Let's see, another fun thing we can put in here is let's do, let's try just real quick here a couple of things. Uh, let's go ahead and try a software shaper. All right, that's not really going to do anything for us. I'm going to shift to a different algorithm here because what I want to do is I want to try and... Uh, mess around with this using other kinds of synthesis that have sort of a pitch component to them. One thing that might work well for our purposes is to use a bit of AM synthesis. So I'm going to pick this algorithm here, algorithm 22. So again we have a sawtooth wave and we have wrap. So let's go ahead and set up um, our pages correctly here. So this was 57, okay, and that's being controlled by LFO1. And this was set to, I believe it was minus 12 dB. Let's just try it, minus 12 dB. Yep, that sounds very much like what we... And it sounds to me like we have pitch tracking on here, so let's turn that off again. There we go. That's consistent across the whole keyboard. Okay. So uh, let's go to the, back to the AUG page here. I'm going to put a, um, a sine wave in here, and for the effect over here, I'm going to pick X gain. So let's go ahead and take off the padding here. So X gain here has this pad of 18 dB. I'm going to turn it down to zero. Let's see what we've got. So let's start playing with the sign pitch.
so we get this sort of interesting interaction. Let me hold down uh, two notes that are an octave apart. Okay, so we don't really have a pitched sound coming out of this necessarily, but we do have We do have some other fun things that are happening as we change the pitch of the sine wave uh, in, in this algorithm. So let me go ahead and I'm going to put this up at, um, oh, let's just go ahead and pick 12 steps, okay, for my sine pitch here. And let's go ahead and start throwing in some effects here. One effect that is particularly interesting is the pitcher, okay. So I'm going to use this uh, effect chain that I have called Forcer because it already has some FX mods set up that are useful. Namely, it'll follow the uh, lowest note that you're playing on the keyboard at the time. So it's a monophonic thing. So let me play a note. So let's start at C4 and play up to C5. Okay, so now let me hold down a note. Like, let's say, for instance, let's start with a, a C2. There we go. Now we're getting into something interesting. So let's throw on a little bit of reverb here. Let's go ahead and pick something that has a bit of chorus in it too. There we go. And I'm going to go ahead and turn on um, an aux mod. I'm going to use slider I to control the level going into this effect here. And let's hold down um, C2 and C3. And there we go. There's a nice horror soundtrack pad, I guess, if you wanted to call it that. And there we are. Um, I think that's a particularly cool sound. I like it because it, it goes up and down, but it does so in this kind of random way. You don't know exactly what pitches it's going to hit or anything like that. But it has a very um, strong sort of character to it, uh, a very kind of recognizable sound, I suppose, if you were to hear it uh, in isolation. Okay, so uh, that's the end of this particular video. Uh, I am going to be experimenting a lot more with aliasing and synthesis, and I'm sure there's lots of other fun things that we can do with it besides what I've shown you here today. And I encourage you to do the same. I think aliasing uh, is misunderstood and maligned uh, unfairly because of uh, its effects when you're trying to do straight up sort of VA synthesis. Uh, I think that there's actually a lot of fun stuff that you could do here, and there's actually some interesting, perhaps, mathematical theory behind it uh, that should be explored as well. All right, thank you very much for watching, and I will see you next time.